Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. In this video, I wanna help you with your forehand. So I wanna help you make your forehand more aggressive so that you can generate more power and still maintain the accuracy. And the way I'm gonna do that is by showing you my training session showing you how I work on my game, because this is something that I'm trying to incorporate at the moment. Now, naturally, I'm a right-handed player, but I'm relearning to play left-handed. I've been going at it for about a year. I'm fairly steady and reliable. I'm like a low-level 4.5 player, so I can maintain consistency, but I don't really have any weapons to hurt my opponent yet. So that's what I'm trying to develop. I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it so I can explain the kind of key thing that you need to understand technically, but also how you can structure your practice sessions to develop your technique more efficiently. So the key to generating power on your forehand and all of your strokes really is the timing. It's all about the timing and the efficient use of the kinetic chain. Now obviously the ball's gonna vary and I've gotta start my swing at the right time, but then from there, it's about getting the right sequence of body movements. Where so many people go wrong is they don't drive through the legs enough. And really the key on the forehand is driving through this back and outside hip and trying to time that with the racket drop. So I'm driving through the hip, the racket drops, goes into a lag position. Now I'm using the elastic in my torso to then start the rotation there. Then I'm using the elastic in my shoulder and then starting to throw the racket forwards. And it's that sequence of body movements done with the correct timing that enables you to efficiently generate the power. If you start the swing at the wrong time, we get the sequence of body movements incorrect and that's where things go wrong. Now I'm trying to get all of the work done before I make contact with the ball. I don't want to be using a lot of muscular force as I make contact. The aim is to start the movement from the hips, from the legs, throw the racket forwards using most of my bigger muscles. Let's start by having a look at some of these at regular speed from behind. You can see I've got a simple cross court feed set up, but I'll talk more about the structure of the practice later. On all of these balls, all I'm thinking about doing is getting the correct spacing, loading up on my left leg and driving through that left hip to initiate the forward swing. Just trying to time the racket drop so that it happens as I launch through that left hip so that I can use my big muscles for the acceleration. And if we look at the same thing from the side, again, regular speed, all I'm thinking about doing is loading up through that left leg, through my outside hip, throwing it forwards, and then using the kinetic chain, so hip, torso, and then the arm comes through. Let's look at a few of these in slow motion. So I'm moving across the ball. I'm loading off my outside leg. So for me as a left hand on my left leg, I'm driving through that leg to initiate the racket drop and the forward swing. So it's all about that kinetic chain. Again, loading off that left leg. I plant it there. I drive through it as I do the racket drop. And then hopefully I use that kinetic chain so I've got the work done early. I'm not muscling the ball. I'm throwing the racket. Looking at it from a different angle, timing that hip drive with the racket drop. That one wasn't quite as clean as the last two. You can see the ball wasn't as powerfully hit. And then if we look at it from the front one, again, loading off that outside leg, drive through the hip there, throw that left hip forwards, and then that starts the sequence to throw the racket into the ball. Now, I just wanna to touch on the, the footwork component briefly because it's so important. For most of these shots, I'm gonna be loading up in an open stance or semi-open stance, and I'm gonna be driving off my outside leg. It'll be my left hand when I'm playing. Here, it's my right hand. If you look, my pelvis is pointing you, my body's facing you because I'm set up and I've got that unit turn. But then if you watch where I finish, I'm always rotating around. You've got to get the pelvis around. You've got to drive into the ground to make that happen. Some of the times it's going to be a kickback when my right leg, sorry, my left leg kicks back as a counterbalance. A lot of the times it's going to be a two-legged pivot where I end up facing the opposite way. But it's really important kind of as I do these demonstrations that you look for that part because it's all about using your legs, driving through the ground and then getting the sequence of body motions right and then just allowing the kinetic chain to create the racket head speed. Let's watch a few focusing on the footwork, the drill set up here. I'm hitting one inside out followed by one cross court forehand. And what you're gonna see is obviously both of them I'm setting up in an open stance or maybe a semi open stance. 
but on the cross cut ball there I'm hitting that two-legged pivot and then when I'm hitting the inside out I'm doing a kickback so both open or semi open stance but just a slight variation the aim is to drive through that left leg to throw that left hip forwards and because of that something has to happen to allow the pelvis to come round Okay, now you understand what to work on technically. I just want to talk briefly about how I structured the practice session because I worked on three different drill variations and I want to explain what they were and why I did it. This is all about practicing at the right level for your current ability and skill level. If the drills are too easy, you're not gonna learn very much. And if they're too hard, you're not gonna learn very much. So it's about getting it right and achieving a specific or a certain number of repetitions at that level. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting off nice and simply. This is just a cross court ball. The ball machine's feeding it to me cross court. I'm returning it back cross court. So it's very simple. There's not much to think about and I can focus on the timing. And what I want you to notice is the power of my shots, the quality of my shots. Because I don't have much to think about, they're very good. I'm basically making every single ball with decent speed and decent direction. And the reason that I'm able to do this is because the, for the feed is relatively easy. Now in the second drill, I'm going to be mixing things up. Previously, I've just had one feed, which makes it easy to think about my spacing and my timing. Now, I'm alternating between a cross-court forehand and an inside-out forehand, which means as I move to the ball, I'm having to think more about my positioning, and I'm having to think more about trying to drive through that leg to create the timing. And what I want you to notice is, though, all, you know, although these aren't terrible shots, that you know, they've got decent depth on them, they're not quite as powerful as before, because with these additional things to think about, my timing isn't quite as good. For the third progression, I'm increasing the challenge by increasing the unpredictability. I'm using the same two balls, cross court and down the line, but now it's not set to alternate, it's set to random, so I've got to read where it's going and then react to it. So again, what I want you to notice is that the power isn't quite as good, but this is obviously a lot more realistic and this is what I need to transition to to be able to do this in a match. So at my current ability level, this is where I'm spending the majority of my practice sessions. The first drill was just kind of about grooving things in, getting them all the warmed up but this is the appropriate level of difficulty for me to improve from where I am now to kind of transition to be able to maintain this level of power within matches. So we've talked about the key thing that you need to understand technically, we've talked about how to structure your practice sessions to make them more effective. But even with both of those things in place, there's probably something else that's gonna hold you back and preventing you from turning your forehand into a weapon. And that thing is your skill and ability level, because not everyone can hit an amazing quality forehand. There is a skill component to this. You need to have a visual system that is able to accurately predict where the ball is so that you can respond quickly and set up in the right position. You need to have sufficient item foot and eye to hand coordination you need to have the coordination to be able to sequence the body movements at the right time and with the right speed relative to the ball that's coming towards you and that's something that most people don't possess I was that way for most of my life. I grew up playing tennis. I was a reasonable player, but I was basically a grinder that hung around at the back of the court because I didn't have good enough timing to hit aggressively. That didn't change until I was in my mid thirties and I started to learn about vision training and brain training to improve coordination. And then suddenly my whole game changed. That was the big thing that really motivated me to, to launch this channel. And this is how I work with players now. I do teach people the technical components because it's important to understand that. But the main focus of the work that I do with players is teaching them how to improve their skill so how to improve their visual reaction speed how to improve their coordination how to improve their focus and concentration now it's not for everyone but if you're willing to put the work in brain-based training can literally change what's possible and help you to transform your game if that's something you would like to learn more about I've created a free web class to teach you I'll place the link down there I'll place the link up there so you can check that out if you're interested. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you did, it'd be fantastic if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. And make sure you get the notifications turned on because there's so much content on YouTube these days. Without the notifications, you probably won't know when I release videos. So you might miss out on something that could have helped your game. The final thing I want to say is if there's content that you would like to see and things you would like me to demonstrate and help you with, let me know in the comment section because that gives me ideas to help me help you.